real delight to welcome to the center here both Marsha and Nathan. Thank you. Yay! Hi, everybody. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much for coming. So exciting. It's like my first demo. Um, get over here. I'm getting mic'd up. This is my bestie. And does my, you, my unofficial ask, official sous chef. Yes. Does everyone have a drink? Is it oh, everyone much have better a drink? if everyone has a drink? Everyone? We need to work that out. Because we like to say, we'll sip to that. Right. <laughs> when things are going good. OK. All right. So I'm going to need a little assistance. The first thing I'm going to do is, um, what am I doing? I'm doing binde tak, which is a mung bean pancake. It's very traditional to Korean cuisine and uh, very healthy and very simple. Uh, that's what she said. OK. So <laughs> Here, I got this. All right. Where do you want it? OK, so let's put it over here. Let's move this tray. Now, the reason why I am here is to prove that anyone can help and cook Korean food, because yes. I am not a, a cook or a chef or whatever. So I'm the dummy. Oh, stop. <laughs> You're a genius. He's really a genius. Could you give me uh, a little bit of oil in there? Sure. Now, he's going to be reading the measurements, because I am a true home cook. I never, ever measure. So I was forced to measure in, a, in order to do this. This is book. sesame seed oil? Or no, no, no. This is canola oil. Put that okay. on here. Well, I'm telling you to put it in there. OK. OK. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough. Okay. Perfect. OK, so we're going to start with mung beans. Now, mung beans, I don't have any dry to uh, show you. But anyway, you can buy mung beans dried and peeled in most Asian markets. Um, you put two cups and so fill it with water, um, fill the bowl with water, soak it overnight. You do a handful of sweet rice. So this has been soaked and ground. Um, this is the mung bean. Now what is it exactly is a mung bean? Like what does that mean? It's a bean. Okay. It's a dry bean. <laughs> it's well, a dry, the mung dry part? bean. What's the mung part? I, I got don't the bean know. Part. Someone came up with that name. Okay. I have no idea. <laughs> anyway, okay. So that is about two cups of uh, ground mung bean. This is sweet rice I'm putting in. Just a, a handful. A fourth a cup of sweet okay, rice. Okay, fourth a cup, yes. It's important. Some kimchi juice. How much kimchi juice? Um, a half a cup. A half a cup. Okay, and some kimchi chopped up. How much? Kimchi chopped up. Okay. One. <laughs> as much as you want. <laughs> It says one generous cup of fine diced kimchi. Okay, you're about to don't be fired. Don't fire me, don't fire about me. About to be fired. This I am the sous chef of sous chefs. Oh, stop it. So this is about a teaspoon of um, soy sauce. Yes. And I like to use Korean soy sauce. I just, you know, I find that um, it's much better than most brands that are sold in. Is it less sodium? Is it, what, 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 why do you um, like that? I just think the flavor is better. Okay. Um, than what you get in, you know, like your, D'Agostino or whatever that, I'm not going to mention the brand, but it starts with a K. <laughs> um, and a pinch of salt. And then um, you just give it a mix. Now, if it, it seems. It smells so good. It does smell good. Um, he hated kimchi, by the way. Nathan I, hated kimchi when he no, first tried it. Yeah, I did. I he did. did. And now I have a vat of kimchi in my refrigerator. I have converted. Yes. It is amazing. <laughs> I eat kimchi with everything on my fish, on my everything. Macaroni and cheese. On my macaroni and cheese. Yes, yes. Um, so you can pretty much tell. This is a little bit too dry for me. So I'm going to add just a little bit of water. Korean cooking is not precise. I mean, it's, you know, you Water's season not to oil your though. taste. Would you? Thank more you. oil. Watch the pan. Okay. okay. Sorry. So I'm folding, folding. And then we're going to put this in, uh, I just need a, a spoon of some sort. Here we go. Okay. All right. Is there a type of oil you're using? Oh, this is um, canola oil. I like to use either extra virgin or something that's not going to impart its own flavor to it. So I'm going to put uh, a spoon. Ooh. Here, oh, ooh. Here in the pan. I should give you the frying job, actually. You just make little cakes like that. And everyone cooks in a dress like this in five-inch heels. Every day. <laughs> Every day. You know how I do. <laughs> OK. So you know I need something to prop this up, because the oil is uh, leaning. I have a little something napkin. Here we go. All right. Is that a good idea? 
It'll be fine. Okay. Calm down. All right. All right. So, spatula, you can flip it. You want to flip? Sure. Okay. So that's a mung bean pancake. That's it. That's so simple. It's very simple. This is the thing that you make me that I love. This is, oh, yes. and then you put it in the soy sauce thing. Yes. Oh, I love that. Exactly. Soy sauce thing called dipping sauce. All right, so you give it a flip. It's about, I don't know, a minute and a half. Now, is this, how do you know when side? to flip it? Like, you know, on a pancake, it bubbles up, and then the bubbles burst, and that's when you know how to you flip have, it. You have to flip up the, uh, the edge here and just check and see if it's brown and sticking together. OK. You see? Mm -hmm. It's golden. All right, so can you flip, or should I'll I try. do it? I'll do it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Lord. Wait, let me do the other ones. You do the okay. last one. OK. All right, so who's had mung bean pancakes here? Anyone? Yay. All right. Well, this recipe is kind of, I had a little bit of help on this recipe. My producer, Eric Ree's mother, um, gave me a tip with the sweet rice because when I made it before, and traditionally in Korea you get it, it's not crispy, and I like a little, a little crunch in there. So she told me to add the sweet rice, and I like to call this Mrs. Ree's Binde Thuk. Where do you get the sweet rice? You can get the sweet rice in an Asian market, Korean market. It's worth it to go, I know. I mean, there are certain things you just can't substitute. But can you get it at I had H -Mart? a situation. Yes, you can get it at H Mart. Um, we had to do. <laughs> Ding! Yes, yes. Um, we had to do a. Um, we did an a APT um, night in, in uh, Palm Springs last year. And we were cooking for like 300 people, so I had sent over the recipe. So I got to the hotel. It's like a huge kitchen and everything. They have you know, like 20 pounds of mung beans or whatever, not peeled, all with the skin on. And then they had cooked like long grain uh, white rice. I was like, holy crap, this thing started in like three hours. So I actually, it, it was fine. I mean, I, I, I blended it with the skin on and I used the, the rice that they had cooked. It's just a matter of a little bit of starch in there. So it works fine, it's not precise. I mean, you could, if you have regular rice at home, you can do that too. But what, what makes sweet rice, what's, what's, what makes it sweet? Um, a lot of love? Like... I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's good. That looks good. Yeah. So these are almost done. So it's going to look like that. Can everybody see? Woo! Pink eggs! Yeah. So. You should, do, you should develop like an emerald thing like bam! Or yeah. ha ha! Coach is done! Right. Kimchi! Right. <laughs> Okay, aren't sous chefs supposed to clean as we go? Well, I can clean, I can clean. Oh, seriously. <laughs> she's a, she's a, uh. oh. <laughs> Let me get some napkins, I'm gonna drain this. Most sous chefs are not in fort jackets. <laughs> you didn't come prepared, ready to work. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. All right, now I'm gonna make an amazing, amazing, Dipping sauce. This? I need a spatula. Scallion dipping sauce? Where'd you put it? Spatula. All right, this is as we go here, folks. Excuse me. Oh, no, it was on the tray that you made me clean. The spatula. He's about to be fired. Seriously, I can't take him. Attitude that I get. <laughs> I'm okay. doing the best that I can. <laughs> Such a complainer. All right, so. There we go. That looks so good, Marjorie. This is satisfying. You know, if you're a vegetarian, this is a great option. Thank you. I've put, for kids, I've done this version with um, cheddar cheese in there, minus the kimchi. So. Well, the, isn't that what you do in the cookbook, is that you combine Korean cooking. It's Korean cooking for an American table. And so you right. Yeah, combine, you have to adjust. Right. Yeah. Perfect. OK, so put that over here. Did you guys all buy the cookbook? Because you have to leave if you didn't. <laughs> I need cookbooks in the Actually, air. Actually, he's gonna, he's gonna lock the doors. Hold your cookbook uh, up, you get to stay. <laughs> if you do not have a cookbook, All right. raise your hands in the back. We're selling them in the back. We're not doing this for our health. We're trying to sell cookbooks. <laughs> That's Sorry. why I have you. <laughs> okay, so I'm taking about, again, it's not precise. This is the dipping sauce. So we've got, let's do a bowl. Okay, a bowl. Oh, we have this bowl here. Okay, can you combine all that? That should be easy enough, Into right? what, this one? Yes, put okay. all that into there. I'm what am I combining? This is a half a cup of soy sauce. Exactly. Um, a fourth of a cup of toasted sesame oil. Yes. And what's this? 
That is uh, rice vinegar. Yes, and two right. tablespoons of rice vinegar. Okay, don't talk about my knife skills. I'm a home cook, remember. <coughs> so think... anyway, I'm chopping up about four scallions. Okay, do all that. Now usually I use um, cochicado, which is red pepper flakes. And I usually use the coarse ones, but we have fine here, and that's, that'll be fine too. So we're gonna dump that in. And that's about two teaspoons. Now is that hot? Eh, a little, you'll be able to handle it. Cause you know, you like, Marja likes spicy food. Hello, so, I'm Korean. I'm usually like this, Lord. <laughs> please don't let my mouth burn off. Exactly. But it's so good. All right, so give that a little stir. I can do that. Okay, good. So that's it, it's easy as that. And you can add more or less, depending on your taste. Like I said, Korean cooking is not about being super precise. Um, just have fun with it, you know? Well, you know, you like always call spicy. it the soul food of Asia. I call Asia. it the soul Why food of Asia. Because it's, you know, Korean cuisine is, um, it's, you know, traditionally not expensive um, cuts of meat or ingredients. And, you know, Koreans are very resilient that way and been through a tough history and had to adapt and, I think the food reflects that, so. And I, I think that African-American soul food as well is derived from, you know, all those challenges and making do with what you have. And resiliency. Exactly. Yes, I love it. You, sir. I told you I was gonna let you taste first. Okay. So we'll do that. Yes. It's the first time I put rice in there. First time you saw rice? Right. I know, this is a new, newly adapted Let's make recipe. a deal first, though. Even, what? you gotta you be, be like. You be quiet. Okay. <laughs> he knows what to do. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. We're trying to sell cookbooks. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll dip these. Okay. I'll be out of your way. All right. And I want a thumbs up if it's good. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Can I taste it? Sure. Again? I love this. This is my, one of my favorite things that you make. Okay, good. All right, so I'm moving on. I'm going to start these. I'm making Oop. another dish. It's called oi nanguk. And it is, oi is cucumber. And I'm doing a cold cucumber soup that Koreans typically eat in the summertime. It's refreshing and light, and it's a good thing to eat when you don't have a taste for anything, really. Mm -hmm. So these are buckwheat noodles. You buy them in a Korean supermarket. Um, and they come in these little bundles and they're serving per person. Um, but I always like to do about three bundles for two people. So we're gonna do that. All righty. Nathan. Have some. It's really we're good. We're on to Oi Can sorry. you lift that lid, please? Okay. Thank you. All right, so we put that in there. That's gonna cook for about five to six minutes. Okay. Just give that a little stir. Could you do stir? that? Yeah. All right, so I need my oi. Now, do you have to put, you know how, like, in when you're cooking spaghetti or something like that? You don't that, put salt in there. Do you, you don't put salt? No. Or oil? There, no, no, okay. no, 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 no. Oil? Who told you to put oil? Well, because you put a little oil in when you cook spaghetti so that they stay separate. No, if you do your job and stir it, it won't stick together. <laughs> All right, so this is oi, everybody. It's cucumber. It's a Korean word for cucumber. And uh, these are actually Korean cucumbers, which I love to use in this um, particular dish because they're super um, sweet and crunchy, and you don't have to peel the skin off. You can leave it there. It's not bitter. So again, don't even talk about my knife skills, but this is how I julienne. So you're going to kind of cut it. <laughs> you cut it at an angle. And then you lay them down like little cards. I'll let you do the second cucumber, Nathan. That's okay. Be hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> you just want your knife skills to look great. Exactly. That's why you're following up after me. I will show you the magic of cutting at an angle. For those of us who didn't go to culinary school, um, this is the easiest way to do it, <laughs> to make a julienne. Huh? Oh, you're passing it around? Okay, good. All right, so you do that. You lay it, and then you kind of lay it down on top of each other like cards, spread them out, and you just chop it and get these little pieces, which is what you want. Okay. Easiest way. Okay, 
You stirring the noodles? You're eating. He is so... He is... Oh, it's good. Lord. You're supposed to be watching the noodles. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Seriously. I'm getting a real assistant in here. <laughs> okay. All right. So put that do, up. Like, but do I have to keep stirring them? No, you're going to come over here and cut this cucumber now. Okay. We need a little entertainment while I prepare everything else. I don't like that you set me up for laughter. You love it. Um, okay, go ahead and, okay, at an angle now, like this, I'll start it. Okay? Okay. Easy. That's what she said. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> now I'm nervous. Oh, stop it. Okay, so, in the cook. <laughs> All right, so you'll see in the cookbook, a lot of my recipes use fish sauce as um, an, e an extra season. <laughs> First of all, you have to curl your fingers to protect them. I don't want fingers and Can I cucumber. cut this the way I want to cut it? Okay, thank you. Okay, so anyway, back to my story. I use a lot of fish sauce. I, I put it a lot in, in the cookbook because... Um, <laughs> I'm a fan of... Is she laughing at me? I, don't point your knife at people. It's rude. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so... But what, are, what happens when I get to this part? I can't cut on the side again. Because you know it's going to get like... Just give me the knife. Give me the knife. Okay. Oh. Who they turn the lights out? That's because... That's not a good sign. <laughs> are they trying to say... Are you ready for us to be done that No, quickly? they're ready for you to be done. Go oh. over there. Okay. Did the sand this is a come? hot mess. Look at that. No, those are pretty. A hot mess. Okay. I'm artistic. Go check the noodles. I All put right. love in my food. Get out. So I was saying that I use fish sauce um, as a replacement for dashida, which I am a fan of. It's um, it comes in in different uh, flavors. You have beef. This is happens to be anchovy. It's just concentrated stock. Um, I like to use it. I put fish sauce as an alternative because people are afraid of MSG, which my husband says is completely natural. So, you know, it's not a bad thing. I like it. It, it flavors what it. What does your husband know? <laughs> Shit. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. <laughs> All right. Let's check the, oh, wait. I need to check the noodle. I can't no, trust I'm, you. I'm, I'm no, stirring. I'm stirring. It's not even boiling. My goodness. That's not my fault. You didn't tell oh, me to boil. Lord. You told me to stir. <laughs> Okay, now I gotta check the noodle. Shoot. Now this is how you check a noodle. You take it out of water. And then you dip it? it in cold. Yeah, you dip it in cold water and then you, you check it and it's got, if it's got that chew that you like, it's a good thing. Now are they supposed to be like, you know, Italian noodles? Are they al dente? Are they supposed no, to have a little chew? No, they're supposed to have a little chew. Can you bring that red thing yes, and straight over? Okay, so this has been about five, six minutes with these bundles in boiling well, that's water. That's gonna be hot. Get out of my kitchen. Okay, go ahead. Get go ahead. Out. I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it. Here, just let me do this. Okay. okay. There we go. Anybody else want to be my sous chef? <laughs> All right. So I'm draining that. I can do something. No, you can't. No. Okay. <laughs> you know, why don't you slice these up? I've laid it all out. No, you out. didn't like the way I sliced. No, just chop it now. Okay. Okay, so I'm putting these in ice water. I'm going to rinse it, like, really get it. You want to shock them so they're still chewy. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> she okay, said chop, and I was about to chop. Oh, Lord, you're stressing okay, me out. Okay, we're Julianne. I'm sorry. Right, you, okay. Is that better? I'm just concentrating on the noodles. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I have doused them in ice water. And they're chewy, and you want to shock them so they have a little bit of bounce when you eat them. That looks pretty good, actually. Thank you. All right. Finally got a compliment. Yep. <laughs> Give them out very sparingly. <laughs> okay. So after you, after you finish doing the chop, okay. Because I need to move on with the recipe. I know I get it. Right, exactly. Okay. So can you put this, put these ingredients in there and just read off the, uh, put the them, measurements, put please? Put them in where? On top of that. Put it in your eye. I have it. Put no, it put, no. You said okay. Put that. Okay. So what am I putting in? These. Stuff on this tray. Okay. Okay. Here we go. This is fish sauce. We're not going to use that. Okay. I'm doing my version. We're doing soy sauce, right? Yes, soy okay. sauce. So how much is that? Uh, two tablespoons of t soy sauce. 
Okay. I think this is probably going to be rice vinegar, right? Yes. Two, three tablespoons of rice vinegar. Mm -hmm. But you know I'm what? not going to butcher the Korean language, and you're going to pronounce that. Gochukaru. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to do one tablespoon of that. Okay. Now. Oh, no, no, hold on. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, so you're going to give it a mix. Now, what I've found is, you know, my recipe might be a little bit too spicy or a little too salty. For people, you want to taste as you go. So at this stage, you have it in there. You're mixing these ingredients. You want to taste it. Good. It needs a little more soy sauce. And you can add it. It's, it's as simple as that. So just do that. I probably added another two tablespoons in. Do you have rice vinegar? Here. Is there a bowl over there? Anywhere? Yeah, but I think we're using it. OK, cool. All right, so new chopsticks. I'm not at home. All right, so now that's fine. Can you give me um, a couple cups of uh, ice water? Yes, ma'am. From here? I can do that. Yes. That I can do. OK, good. Is this it? Is this? No, we need ice in there. We're starting over. Okay. There we go. I, can I just do it? There is that a Such couple? a brat. Just, yes, two. Yay. OK, good. All right, so I've made a soup like that. I like to put ice cubes in it, especially since it's a summer cold noodle soup. Koreans like it really cold, so there's always ice included. You made this for me in like 10 minutes one day. Remember, I, I came from the gym and I was like, I'm hungry, I am starving, and this is one of my favorites. Yeah, it's really good. Especially in the summertime, it is so refreshing. I'm in love with Korean food. Like, I'm, I'm playing around, but Marja has introduced me to Korean cooking and Korean food, and it is so amazing, especially at 3 o'clock in the morning. Which is how I introduced him. Right. Because I wake Eat up this. refined and refreshed even after Patron. Right. So I put about three scallions in there. You can put more or less or omit it. It's not a big deal. And then let's take our noodles. We have a little bowl somewhere. Here we go. Thank you. Now I like to do the Korean noodle twist just to give you a little presentation here. Now you know one of the most interesting things that I learned from your show is that slurping is actually preferred. Yes. And I love a culture where you can really enjoy your food. Exactly. And as loud as you want. I'm doing a little twist there. So if you eat any of this, please slurp it. <laughs> because she's fragile. Stop it. OK. Now this little winding thing, is that your technique or is that a Korean technique? I mean, most Korean restaurants, when they serve noodles, they, they wind it around. Yeah, it's just a better presentation. So you take this and you just ladle it in here. It's as easy as that. Lots of soup. It's really vinegary. It's good. You know, this would be a good thing to eat like on a diet. Did you ever hear of that vinegar no. diet? No. Well, that's when you gave it to me is when I was on my cleanse. That's right. I lost 25 pounds. It's fierce. You, sir. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyone? Would you like to try? Let's get some chopsticks. Any more chopsticks, Chopsticks anybody? right here. Oh. Um, maybe. Don't be shy now. Oh, OK, good. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? You, sir. Yeah. I need a diet, so. <laughs> <laughs> great. OK. Come sound We're done with this? That's great. OK. I don't know if many of you know Marge's story, but if anyone watch the show? Did anybody hear? OK, good, 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 good. All right, good. And when I first met her mom, Suki, the first, she left us alone in the house. And I, I, I poured Suki a glass of wine. And I said, teach me some Korean. I went to the grocery store, and I came back in there hustling in my kitchen <laughs> at 2 in the afternoon. And we're like laughing like, by the time do? she gets back. We, we, we're like a bottle of wine in. And she was, I was like, teach me Korean. And she's like, just learn kamsamida. And that's the only word that I can, like, she, I, I try That's the only to, word he doesn't butcher. Yeah, I butcher everything else. But right. No, you try. You I do. try, I try. I'm not going to knock you Because I love it. What is this for Okay, so I am doing a simple salad dressing for a romaine salad. I would suggest using a more sturdy lettuce. Look who just walked in. Lindsay Jones, please. He's always late. He is our perpetually late, late friend. friend. An hour later, really? OK. Whatever. 
You missed all the and stuff. And trying to tiptoe, too. You missed the mung bing pancake. Yeah. Well, that's his favorite. So I've converted, <laughs> I've converted all my friends to Korean food. And Lindsay is a huge fan. He's even more adventurous than you are in some yes. things. Yes, yes, yes. OK, so I'm taking about a bundle of uh, romaine, as you can tell, chopping it roughly. Nathan, card. OK. I got you. There you go. So we're going to do, um, what do you want? You want me to read off the go ingredients? Ahead. OK, a fourth of a cup of uh, soy sauce. That would be this. Yes. I soy sauce. I need the lettuce first. Well, hold on. Wait a second. Hold. Now, is there a special way that I have here. to sprinkle? You got to put it in here. OK. Oops. That's a big bowl. Just pour it in there. So I'm going to do it with a flare. A, a fourth of a cup of soy sauce. He just wants his own show. <laughs> he just wants his own, own show. show. I need my own cooking show. And then two, wait a minute, two tablespoons plus one teaspoon. Couldn't they just say two, three tablespoons? Just put it in there. Uh, anyway, you see that's your own oil. taste. Yes. <laughs> With my eyes closed. Two tablespoons of rice vinegar. That's right. That's yes. What that is. Okay, and then one um, Hold table. on. I'm doing my dashida. I gave oh. you guys a healthy, organic version. I'm doing my bam. <laughs> kimchi. No, you can't. Bam is already taken. Well, you have whatever. To say, I just said Aha. kimchi. <laughs> Aha is your thing. <laughs> I go. Ah, ah, <laughs> right, yes. Whatever that means. Do that. Get out. Wait, hold on. I want to put a little. I can't put my fish sauce in? No, you're not putting it in. But I, I need love the dashi the fish sauce. to replace it. You're going to ruin my my recipe here. OK, so again, I usually used coarse uh, red pepper flakes, kochikaru, but we only have fine, but that's fine. So put that in there. All She's right. looking at you like, I can cook this better than you. Would you stop it? Is that what you're saying? You're like, I can cook this better than you. No, only you. You got to cook with that, too, don't you? Get her out of here. Get her out of here. It's the enemy. Stop it. <laughs> Embarrassing. I don't even know who he is. Okay, so that's it. You mix all that together, give it a little toss. Now, okay, I'm sorry. What? Please don't kill me. What? Why is that distinctively Korean? That because looks it's like a just Korean salad. ingredient. We have lettuce in Korea, you know. <laughs> that is not what I meant. But I'm saying, but like, what what makes it this this salad? Because it's, it's Korean ingredients. Is it the fish Sesame sauce? Oil. Is the, okay. Sesame oil is very traditional to Korea. Um, the soy sauce we're famous for. It's very organic. And I love this company, um, and I always butcher the name, Pulmuan. Mm -hmm. um, they're very famous for tofu noodles, which is what I always buy every single time I go to the grocery store, because my daughter loves, uh, Chloe loves, um, you know, noodles and, and tofu. So. It's great. It's organic. They don't use any additives or preservatives, which is hard to find nowadays. Right. And most, uh, especially in seasonings. You know what I mean? So they're they're the top for me. They're the bomb. The bomb. Yes. Like Beyonce. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's a little bit of salad. And this salad you could serve with steak or whatever. It, I mean, it really doesn't matter. It's such an easy recipe. Just chuck it all in there. You know, I hope you guys are adventurous when you try these recipes. You don't have to stick to it exactly. Korean food is definitely not precise. What's your favorite? What's your favorite recipe in in the book? That's a good question. I think it would have to be the bindae duck. It really? Yeah, it's just so traditionally Korean and satisfying and good for you. Now, what's what, what is that? You know, on your show, you say there's this place that you always go to when you get off the plane. You have to go there, and you have to oh, have this. Um, what is that? I go to this. Uh, I go to uh, Namdaemun Market in Korea, and I always have to have kalchichurim, which is uh, belt fish, and it's braised with mu, which is Korean uh, daikon. And it's a little hole in the wall. They have an alley like full of ten different places that serve the same thing. But I always go to the same one. It's like stall number six or something. And it's just comfort food, you know what I mean? Like when I go down south, I want macaroni and cheese and some fried chicken and collard greens. It's right. like that for me. I don't know if you know this about Marja. She's also a great soul food cook. Her macaroni and cheese is the best macaroni and cheese I've ever had in my life. It's actually on the menu at Mercer Kitchen. That's they true. They don't make it like you do. No, they don't. Like, she's, oh, it's cheesy and just black. It's just wonderful. <laughs> 
right, anybody up for salad? Yay, you, sir. And you. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, and that's it for me. Whoops. That's it? Thank you. I can't cook anymore? You weren't cooking anyway. Yes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> How long would you cook them? Probably about three minutes. But you have to you have to taste as you go. Sure. Shoot. Yeah. 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 yeah, I hate that. Um, I would check it after about two minutes, and then you'll be able to gauge, um, you know, how long it needs after that. Yeah. Any other questions? It's good? You like it? Good. <laughs> That's it for me. Hmm. Nick, read her next book. Right. It's how to fake the funk. Right. Um, soy yeah, sauce. Soy wow. sauce. It's so. For me, Where's it's so soy sauce integral. It's not the same, right? Listen to me. I'm, I can't cook. Why am I asking you? Answer it's, the question. Gosh, it's so integral to, to, um, you know, Korean flavor. Gosh, it's so bad. Can you take a pill oh. or something? <laughs> Can you get a shot or something? Yes, I'm just gonna drug myself. Right. <laughs> That's a good question. Food is you know worth what? It. I think I think most of these sauces would would do. Uh, it's not going to taste exactly the same, but just play around with the ingredients. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Don't I mean, eat that salad. I put a lot of soy sauce in there. I, know. <laughs> I tasted one just to know what it tastes like. Delicious. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh good. Good. Yeah. That is really a bad allergy to have. <laughs> oh man. That's like being allergic to like shrimp. I, hate, yeah. I feel so sorry for people who are allergic, My mother's allergic. to like shellfish or whatever. They don't get to yeah. eat lobster and. There's no substitute for it either. No. So I'm sorry. I digress. I'll have to think about that. I'll answer that on my blog for people who are allergic to. To soy sauce. Or fish sauce. A lot of people are allergic to fish, so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> um, so she was asking if you're hosting someone for the first time and this someone has never really been introduced to Asian food, um, particularly Korean, what would, what would I pick from the book to serve? I would pick the, the mung bean pancake because it's reminiscent of, um, it reminds you of a potato latka, kind of. I think that translates really well. Um, probably japchae because it's got meat and vegetables and it's a little sweet and a little savory at the same time. Um, what was the thing The beef, uh, uh, the kalbi. That kalbi marinade works on everything. Yeah, just keep it simple. I mean, you know, I feel like those are things that most Westerners know about Korean food in any way, and there's a reason because it's somewhat familiar. Um, but I like the fact that a mung bean pancake is relatable, but it's so totally Korean. Well, you, as, as someone who has just recently been introduced over the last couple of years mm -hmm. to Korean cooking, right. the flavors are Ooh. not foreign flavors. They are great flavors. And, you know, and I, I think Marge's thing was, just eat it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I ate it, and I was like, oh, my God, this is great. And then we went to that restaurant, and what's the name of that restaurant? Pucha. Yes. And There's then, a restaurant on 32nd Street that I love. It's called Pucha, and it's... It's styled after the hojang uh, matcha uh, um, in Korea, which are tents on the street, and you just, it's street food, but you eat it late at night after you've been drinking, and you know, they have little tidbits here and there. But they serve this pude um, chige, which is army stew. And that particular dish came about because of all the surplus that the US Army had given um, Koreans after the war. Uh, so that's surplus with spam, hot dogs, American cheese. Um, and which it is for... good at the Patron, baby. <laughs> it is so good. Yeah, it's our meaty, cheesy, spicy 
and Wonderful uh, he loves it, yeah. Anybody else? Oh, you. Oh. Red leaf lettuce. Yes, it's not as rigid as uh, romaine lettuce is, but it's rigid enough that it, it holds up well as a wrap. Yeah, yeah. Red leaf lettuce. Uh, for the uh, for uh, bulgogi or kalbi when you wrap it in the lettuce. Why are you doing this whole program? Why was it just most challenge? The most difficult challenge. Um, I think editing down the footage. I mean, we only did probably 70 percent. We only put on tape probably 70 percent of the stories that we actually shot. It was just really hard to edit down. Yeah, there's just so many good stories and so much good food and. We only had 13 episodes, so yeah. Season two. Okay, I have a question. I have a question. Hmm? What was what when you went to Korea? What did you discover? Like, what, what what was your biggest moment? Your aha moment, as Oprah says. What was that moment? My biggest moment is that you know, being adopted and growing up in Western culture and meeting my mother later in life, um, and having to relearn this culture again, the language, the customs. I always kind of felt displaced. I, I felt kind of like an invisible Korean, I like to say. Because I felt so Korean inside. I had that Han, which is, I don't even, even know how you explain Han. It's like pain and regret and hope and all that good emotional stuff wrapped up into one. Um, but I felt at a disadvantage. I, I used to think that I needed other people to recognize me as being Korean, to feel Korean. But I realized that what I was missing was just knowledge about my own culture. You know, and I went to Korea and I learned how to bow at the temple and how to pray properly. I've been to Korea many times with my mother over the years and, um, you know, due to language barrier and everything, a lot of details have been lost, but I learned a lot about the, the, the culture and the history of it and I just felt more empowered. So that was my aha moment. It's like, oh, okay. I'm yeah, Korean. now I get it. Oh, okay. Now that's why they do that. Well, you know, I think one of the most remarkable things about Marge's story is, and you know, and I, I, I don't know if this is a touchy subject or not, but I think it's the truth, so mm -hmm. it's the truth, right. is that, you know, when she was born in Korea, she was not issued a birth certificate because she was black and Korean. She was African American and Korean. And, and also I had a single mother, and right. you know, it's a very patriarchal society over there. And then to be raised in America by an African American family pretty much as an African American. Yeah, I um, didn't have any exposure to, to and, Korean And culture. then to come full circle to this moment where she has become an ambassador, just personally for me, for Korea, mm -hmm. and then for all of you, and, and, and for the world, and everyone who is watching her show and buying her cookbook, I think it's one of the most amazing things that I can ever um, think about. And I'm so proud of you. I'm this so proud of you. This is why I keep you. <laughs> It, it's just it's living proof that it's living proof that if you if you are if you put good things out, you'll get good things back. Yeah, that's true. And and that little girl that was in an orphanage mm -hmm. at three, yeah, she never would have been able to see this. Right. And that's so wonderful. Yeah, yeah. It's wonderful. Don't make me cry. Yes. Where do you buy your Oh, I go to H Mart in Richfield every week. Is yes. that where I have my kimchi from? Yes. That's where I buy my kimchi too. I brought him back a gallon bucket. <laughs> a big old. Is, yeah. Oh, I love it. But that's when I don't make my own kimchi because it's really it's time consuming. Well, your kimchi is the best. Thank you. Uh, mak kimchi. Yeah. You know it's easy. Yeah. What's that? Mak kimchi is um, it's it's the napa cabbage okay. that you used to see him, but I just cut it up. As opposed to cutting it in in fourths and then spreading you know paste on each leaf, it's very uh, time consuming. But How long do you let yours ferment? Because I remember you telling me not to put it in the refrigerator for right. a while. Right. I always tell everybody to leave it out for two days at room temperature and then put it in the fridge. But I like it really sour. Some people don't like it sour, so you don't have to leave it out. But it just brings out more flavor, I think. Yeah. Because he'll go to a Korean restaurant, and most Korean restaurants don't serve sour kimchi. And they say, I hate this kimchi, it's right. so bad. Like, this is not like your kimchi. Right, this is, he's used to it fermented, so. Yeah. 
the, what are the medicinal purposes? You know, because your mom and I have talked about this, about that Koreans eat, not necessarily like Americans eat. We, the Koreans eat because it is sustenance and it's food. and it's, Right, and it's had to be medicine um, at times um, through history. But, um, you know, Korean food, I think, is... Uh, it's rooted in, in, in remedies. It, need, it needs to be a cure-all for hunger, <laughs> for sustenance, for uh, medication. I, one of my favorite Korean dramas is Daejeonggum, which is, <laughs> yeah. They're like, that's not all my children. Right. <laughs> it is. Right. Like, 68 who is Erica Kane? Who is Erica Kane? Erica Kane was that woman, the, the head kitchen lady. OK. <laughs> um, yeah, so I loved it because it really went into the, the medicinal aspects of Korean food. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, if I'm not feeling well, I'm coming down with a cold, I'm like, ah, I need to have samgyetang, which is a whole small boiled chicken with Korean dates and garlic and ginseng and... Is that um, in the cookbook? Yes. Page 87. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know what page it's on, but it's in the book. Um, and I personally don't like the taste of ginseng, so I put ginger in there and then a lot of garlic so that's my you know my this is this is my cookbook to my taste but again you can always substitute to yours I have a question you know, when I used to be vegetarian and vegetarian yes yeah, so I was adopted from Korea when I was three I grew up in northern Virginia with my parents I found my birth mother in Brooklyn when I was 19 yeah, so I've known her all this time, and she works my nerves like anybody else's mother. She can't stay with me more than three days. Fourth day, you gotta go. He means my biological mother. My biological mother. Yeah. Yes. Huh? How do I combine yeah. French and Korean yeah. food? Um, <clears throat> actually, I don't touch Korean. Um, I don't touch French food, but my husband has made this very traditional Alsatian dish called bakoff. The recipe is in the book. It is layers of potato. By the book. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's <laughs> layers of potato, onion, pork, or lamb if you want, and it's covered with wine. But he put kimchi in the layers, and it was amazing. Really, really good. But again, I mean, if you, I think the, you know, Korean ingredients and Korean food is really only foreign to Americans. Because if you go into other cultures, like Latin America, there's fermented foods. You know, other parts of Asia, if you go into Europe, there's lots of fermented foods. So I think, um, you know, it translates well worldwide. It's that big of a jump. <laughs> That's why I always make it. I feel like it's it's the root of our culture. What is that? Binde thak is the mung bean pancake that I made. Um, I feel like it's a root of our culture. It's it's inexpensive. It's what peasants ate. It was our sustenance. Meat was always, especially beef, was always very expensive in Korea because we we're, were very mountainous. Korea is the size of Kentucky. You know, there's not a lot of grazing land for cattle, so you know, beef has has be a luxury. Well, now it's more mainstream, but <clears throat> I mean, that's what we had to eat. And it's you know. very healthy ingredients. Very healthy and simple. A yeah. couple yeah. more questions. Because the food yes. is staring at everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Korean food has so much to taste, and they don't really, you don't really have measurements. How did, Which you, is, how did you go I about was forced. the measurements? And then also, it depends on the taste of the cook. So are you right. more of a Savory person, like you always savory, the savory. I'm more of a savory, okay, savory so person. Sugar. Leah, okay, I don't so, need dessert. So maybe we might want to put, throw a little more sugar in there. Exactly. Like I said, I say throughout the book, you have to you have to cook to your taste. Um, I have never ever measured anything, so that's why I don't even remember the measurements because I never cook with measurements. I just you know I I know by by eye, um, but. You know, doing this cookbook forced me, of course, Any to do it. Any shortcut for this off that you have to like always marinate the the beans in advance, and then you can't get around that. I mean, you have to do it overnight. That and the rice together in a bowl, 
it's easy though. You put it in before you go to bed, and then it's ready to make and drain in the morning. So that's the simplest recipe ever. All right, let's eat, everybody. Thank you. And, and, as uh, Marsha makes her way to the back, I did just want to point out, Marsha, that while many of us have come from across town, some of us maybe from the suburbs, one visitor here actually flew in from Hawaii no. just for this event. You want to raise your hand? Yeah, thank you. Aloha, mahalo. Thank you. And for everyone else, please join us for the book signing and thank you, Marsha and Nathan. How nice is that? Oh, that's amazing. That's great. That was great.